presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Florida. A Sunday in Miami. Three game series comes to a close. The San Diego Padres are on a roll. They've won seven of eight, and the Marlins are not. The fish have dropped four in a row. Nice parade, Little League parade, and of course, on a Sunday, bark at the park. Jim Jerko and the Padres have taken the first two. Yonder Alonso, a Miami guy. Padres will have to face Jose Fernandez. Hi, everybody. Rich Walsh along with Tommy Hutton. Your ace is the guy that stops a skid. The Marlins are on a, a skid right now, and it seems like every time Jose starts, that's the case. Yeah, and I think the other thing, Rich, when Jose starts, it seems like not only do we see more energy from the crowd, we see more energy from the ball club, too. Especially in this ballpark with the ball club. The fish behind Jose and Jose in this park are unbeatable right now. Yeah, it's been an incredible run for Jose Fernandez starting his career and look at the numbers at Marlins Park. An ERA of 1.19. He's 15 and 0. 15 straight home run wins. You see that he's closing in on the major league record. 23 straight home starts without a loss. That is unbelievable for Jose. He's confident. He loves this mound. And I guarantee he's looking forward to pitching against the San Diego Padre Club. Jose getting ready. Now he'll have to pitch against the Padres. And one of the big pieces they added in the offseason. And that's James Shields. Well, you have Jose who just turned 23. Shields is 33 years old. He's 6-2 uh, and two in his career against the Marlins. Uh, remember, seven years with the Rays, a couple of years with Kansas City. Here's a guy who's a model of consistency. Eight straight years, 30 or more starts, 200 or more innings, 11 or more wins. On this Jose day, the Marlins try to snap a four-game losing streak. The Padres are hot right now and on a roll. When we get back, Jose takes the hill. A Jose day on a Sunday at Marlins Park. Padres and fish.
Andres and Marlins out to center field. Jeff Conine, Craig Minervini. Guys? That is a Jose Day, Rich, and that's an exciting one for the Marlins. He did win the uh, first one on this uh, trip here, homestand against Washington, and now he goes to extend that record. What could he do better in this game? I think commanders are going to be a little bit better this game last game out four walks and up until that point only had three on his short season but only three walks and we saw the first few starts of this year 76 percent strikes in the strike zone from a power pitcher that's pretty remarkable and I think today he's going to fix what he did last time and be more in the strike zone today you might have expected that fifth start in his first start coming back but he's been unbelievably sharp and crisp especially in the first four. And even then, he only allowed one run last time out. Yeah, absolutely. Coming off a major surgery like that, you don't really know what to expect because he hadn't seen a live hitter in so long. But look what he's done to start a career. 15 consecutive wins and 23 starts. The most win at home to start a career. And he's been absolutely lights out. And that is undefeated as well. That's the key there. Not just not just most wins, but without a loss. It's an incredible run. He also has a major league record already of 23 consecutive starts without a loss to start a career with those 15 wins so for today though to be a little bit sharper against a Padre team that's red hot should be a good matchup what do you see It'd be a great matchup and uh, the, the Padres offense if you look at the ranks has not been very good but they have been swinging the bats much better as of late and you got James Shields on the other side of the mound so the Marlins gonna have to get to him early get Jose a lead and he'll take care of the rest well, it's been opportunistic against the Marlins as they were in the game yesterday where they strung together four runs in that third wound up hanging out for a 5-3 win. So on this Jose Day in MIA and Park at the Park Part 2, got a little Sunday baseball for you. Enjoy it with us. Fox Sports Florida. And the Marlins are hoping that a Jose Day will wipe away their blues. Padres and Marlins. Jose Fernandez will face this San Diego lineup. It's brought to you by J.M. Lexus. Will Venable swinging it and playing well in center field. Young Irvis Solarte is hot. He's got a seven-game streak himself. Matt Kemp's in right. Justin Upton in left. 
Yonder Alonso, the Miami products at first. Derek Norris behind the plate. Jed Jerko at second base. Alexi Amarista, the shortstop. James Shields hits ninth. The Padres have won 7 of 8, 12 of 16. They've brought themselves a step closer in that wild card race. And here comes Jose Fernandez. A little tip of the cap. Ready to take the mound and ready to face the Padres. Yeah, I mentioned, Rich, that Jose certainly looking forward to pitching against this Padre club. And one of the reasons it was in San Diego last May 9th that Jose made his last start of the season. And he went five innings, gave up six hits and six runs. So he remembers that. Here's the defense brought to you by BMW. Dietrich in left. Yelich Ichiro filling out the outfield. Prado Echevarria, Miguel Rojas, Justin Bohr around the infield. And Jeff Mathis handles Jose in this one today. Jose's last start beat a win over the Nationals. Tommy touched on that. 99 pitches, which was a season high. He has a chance to tie a major league record for both consecutive decisions won at home to start a career. Johnny Allen long ago and the former Padre Lamar Hoyt both started at 16 and 0 at home. Jose at 15 and 0. And you see his 4 and 0 record. Here in 2015. Good matchup with Jeff Mathis behind the plate. Remember, Jose's command wasn't where he normally has it in his last outing. Four walks in the six innings. In talking with Chuck Hernandez, his pitching coach, he said Jose worked on uh, that certainly in his off day, on his throw day, and had a good session in the bullpen. So I certainly look for a, a lot better than that today. It's a Padre team that's been scoring runs. They've been aggressive, opportunistic, and Will Venable takes a fastball that misses away. Pitch Petty bring you that first pitch, a 94 mile an hour fastball. Salarte and Kemp also scheduled here in the first. And fastball is away. Now, the last start, Tommy, in terms of control and command, Jose didn't have his normal stuff. No, he didn't. I mean, he had his stuff as far as velocity and movement on the changeup and the slider, but the command wasn't there. He, he fell behind. He had some three ball counts. Normally, we don't see that. 99 pitches in his six innings. I'm sure he'd like to take a, a game a little deeper than six, too. Ah! Two balls, two strikes. 23 is Jose now, his birthday on Friday. So his first start as a 23 year old. And strike three called. Venable didn't like it. Jose may have gotten a low strike. But he stayed in that same area in pitching to Venable. Down and away. That looked down. Look at the way Jeff Mathis caught it, though. And got some help and certainly maybe swayed Adrian Johnson, the home plate umpire. Yeah, he certainly did. That was down. Adrian Johnson behind the plate. Bill Miller, Sean Barber, Doug Eddings, the umpires here. Jose misses on a fastball to Yang Arvis Salarte. I think umpires, especially the home plate umpire, I think they get up for a game like this, knowing that you have two quality pitchers. Salarte finds right field with a solid single. Padres have a base runner. Now you get into the meat of the order. Matt Kemp, Justin Upton, Yonder Alonso. Well, Salarte continues his hitting streak, extends it to eight games. Remember, Salarte yesterday had that hard slide into third and looked like he was hurt, and it wasn't a knee or an ankle or a hamstring or a quad. It was a strawberry, which is in baseball parlance the uh, scar or Abrasion you get from repeatedly sliding on one part of your body. Matt Kemp swing and a miss. You mentioned Kemp and Upton coming up, the two big guys. They're both right handed hitters. And in Jose's young career, right handers are hitting 169 against him. So Larte has just one stolen base. Jose going right after Kemp. And it's 0 2. 
There are the career splits. Lefties aren't tearing them up, but they are over 200. Yeah, you robust 206. <laughs> Kemp stays alive, and it's 0 and 2. Padres winners last night, 5 to 3. Kemp had a nice night. He was 2 for 3 with a sacrifice fly. For San Diego, eight to three in 11 innings, winners on Friday night. So far, Rich, all fastballs from Jose. That one foul back. You know, for Jose. The way he arrived in Miami, the injury last year, it seems like he's been around longer than the number of starts he's made in the big leagues. In his career, this is just his 42nd start in the big leagues. He's 20 and 8 and an ERA of 2.28. Oh, two. There's a breaking ball, and it's down low. Now 23. Uh, a couple days past that mile post. Of course, just eight starts for Jose last year. Breaking ball, left it up, and Kemp blisters it to left. And the Padres have runners first and second with one out, and here's Justin Upton. So he went with a couple of breaking balls in a row. One was a good one, Kemp laid off of it. The next one he came back and watch how he hangs this one. Up middle of the plate. Kemp picks it up very well. Justin Upton now certainly he has seen Jose as a member of the Atlanta Braves. Which might be Jose's next opponent. And Upton 0 for 7 with four strikeouts. Which is also reflective of Jose's success against the Braves early in his career. Right now, watching Jose, it's it's an established time. He's trying to establish his pitches, get in a rhythm. As he started up then with the slider. Another slider. Another strike. Justin Upton. A sacrifice fly and a single in last night's ball game. It's interesting how different the, the starts for his older brother Melvin and Justin's career were in different organizations. Now they've played on the same team twice in the big leagues. That's into the glove of Mathis and he squeezes it. And Justin up to strikes out. There's that slider. See the target by Mathis. He wanted that down, he wanted it away. To get Upton to chase it, he chased it. You could see Upton pointing, hoping that that ball hit the ground. Otherwise, he was out. If it hits the ground before Mathis secures it, he's still alive on a foul tip. Yeah, Justin Upton, 27. Older brother Melvin, 30. And the irony for the Padres is they've got Melvin for two more years contractually, and Justin Upton is headed to free agency. Now Yonder Alonso. Well, two guys who were born in Cuba. Jose out of Santa Clara, Cuba. Alonso, who moved to Miami when he was 10, went to Coral Gables High School. And takes away. A 
Alfonso one for five with a double against Jose. Well, you should see his dad. His, his dad looks like he could still play. He was down around batting practice. His father, a catcher in Cuba, played in Serie Nacional, the league, with all the great Cuban players. Not able to get the change up over on that 2 0 pitch, and I'm sure his dad enjoying this matchup with these two kids. Yes. <laughs> 3 and 0. Oh, just underway. Padres with a couple runners on and two outs. I would guess he has the green light. 3 and 0. Oh. And he takes one of the things, regardless of if the Padres score or not, San Diego has accomplished this. They've pushed Jose over 20 pitches in this first inning. And with the number of walks, the four walks in his last start against the Nationals, that's what uh, kept him to just six innings in the game against Washington. Now Derek Norris, one of the guys that the uh, Padres are hoping gets hot these next two months. As they try to inject themselves closer to that second wild card Five. spot strike. Okay. He's starting to get hot because in the last three games, he's eight for 13 and he's driving in runs. He had the five for five game, which helped in that last game in New York. Dramatic grand slam as well. Inside out's a breaking ball and it dribbles foul down the first baseline. The good news with the bases loaded, Jose's quickly gotten ahead 0 and 2. Goddard, Kansas is home to Derek Norris. One and two. Originally a Nationals draft pick back in 2007. Gio Gonzalez. He's going from Oakland to Washington brought Norris to Oakland. Breaking ball popped him up. And a long inning for Jose Fernandez. 24 pitches ends in the glove of a Danny Echeverria. No runs. Padres leave him loaded, underway, and scoreless in Miami. Swing in the middle. Break three. 
And he got it. Got it. Fans in Florida know all about James Shields. A terrific run with the Tampa Bay Rays. A couple seasons with Kansas City helped pitch the Royals into the World Series last year. And one of the big plums that A.J. Preller was able to uh, procure, so to speak, to start this 2015 Padres season. Four years, $75 million. And Shields, the 33-year-old, gets Ichiro, Miguel Rojas, and Christian Yelich. Ichiro fouls it off. Well, the guy he faces first, Ichiro, has more bats against James Shields than the rest of the Marlins roster combined. Of course, Shields and Ichiro, lifelong American leaguers until this year. Look at that. 65 ABs, 19 for 65. Ichiro against Shields. And the 1 1 misses. Not afraid to go to that changeup anytime. And he may have gotten that pitch. Nitro checks his swing, did not go. And it's three and one. Nitro's cold right now. Last 10 games, he's hitting just 105. Four hits, 38 at bats. Drives that to center, hits it pretty well. Venable goes back, reaches up, can't get it. Off his glove, Ichiro's got himself a double. And that'll break a cold spell. Just his second double of the season. We've seen Will Venable, and we've talked about Venable as to his athletic ability. He plays a shallow center field. Ichiro got a pitch up, a fastball. And I think surprised Venable to send it over his head just off his glove. But a good A.B. and even Venable couldn't chase it down. He doesn't miss many of those out center. Miguel Rojas now the last time the Marlins had Rojas in the starting lineup it was in San Diego. And he injured his shoulder making a diving acrobatic. Play up the middle left the game. Oh. And with that sore shoulder, he could not swing for the last three, four days. He could bunt. He could play defense. And that's why the Marlins, and that's why we haven't seen him at all. Yeah, we saw him as a pinch runner. Here's a situation where Dan Jennings may have said, get him over to third any way you can. Bunt him, send a ground ball to the right side, whatever you feel most comfortable. Rojas fouls it, and it's. One ball and one strike, especially in a ball game where you've got Jose Fernandez starting. Runs have been a premium for the Marlins all season long, but especially over the last month. And so just getting one right out of the chute would feel like a, a moral victory for well, the Well, you get one with Jose on the mound, and there you go, too. Ball and a strike. And a bunt, and it rolls foul. This play by Norris as it curled around the line. Jay Alexis brings you Miami's lineup. Each row has doubled. Rojas is up. Christian Yelich in the three spot. Derek Dietrich gets promoted to the cleanup spot. Martin Prado hitting fifth. Justin Bohr slides down to six. Jeff Mathis seventh. The Danny Echeverry at short. And Jose Fernandez. Slotted ninth. D. Gordon getting the day off. Rojas in protect mode. Yeah, well, you can see Rojas, uh, he's, he's a smart hitter. And even with two strikes, Shields knows that, so he tried to bust him in with a hard. Fastball, but Rojas was still trying to move him over. Frank Menachino 
Marlins hitting coach watching. See if Shields goes hard in again. Liner to center. That's a base hit. And each row is going to score. And it gets by Venable. He tracks it down at the track. And Rojas has a double. Miguel Rojas, who hasn't played in a week, is now seven for his last nine at the plate. And in very sporadic play, a lot of pinch hit appearances, has a six game hitting streak as well. Always oh, we say it, good things happen. He's trying to still send the ball to the right side, keeps his hands in, and hits that ball really hard. Almost got it all the way to the wall. Great job by Rojas. Now Christian Yelich it's a different day rich the last three games the Marlins have not doubled and they have back to back doubles in this one to start things. Smile on Jose Fernandez face Yelich now. Nobody out still. Ah! Shields keeping it away the idea that Yelich is thinking to pull the ball. Couple hits in the series for Yelich. And he does pull the ball to second base, and it'll move Rojas to third. Yelich is out, and it gives Derek Dietrich an opportunity to drive home a run. Well, you really have to like the approach of the first three hitters, Rich. The double by Ichiro. Rojas trying to do a job, doubles home Ichi. And then Yelich clearly just trying to pull the ball to get Rojas over to third. Great job. Infield in. And here is Dietrich. Shields for the stretch. Dietrich lifts it left field. That's deep. And deep enough to score the run. Upton makes the catch. Here comes Rojas. And the Marlins do a nice job of constructing two runs. I'll tell you what, the Marlins haven't had an inning like this where they've put together this kind of two run rally in a long time. A lot of good things. Dietrich goes up there with an idea, get a pitch he can drive, he gets it deep enough to left and picks up Rojas from third. Great job all around. Now Martin Prado. Now Prado doesn't have a lot of at bats, eight of them against Shields, but he's four for eight. For his first hit of the series. Pitch was out. Now the Padres, after beating the Marlins last night, many of them in the clubhouse were watching the Rangers and the Giants. And the Rangers took a lead late in that ball game, only to see the Giants come storming back with big home runs. Brandon Belt, Buster Posey, Hunter Pence. Pence uh, tied the game in the eighth inning. And then hit an 11th inning home run that put him ahead. Sam Dyson took the loss in that ball game. Newly acquired Sam Dyson. Shields misses. 2 0 lead for Miami. The way Shields has been the epitome of a horse. Every full season he's had in the big leagues. And once he got there as a rookie, everyone has been a full season. 31 or more starts, 200 or more innings every year. And he loses Prado. Well, here's a look at that defense. Behind Shields, Justin Upton, Will Venable, Matt Camp at the outfield. Solarte, Amarista, Jerko, and Alonso around the infield. Derek Norris has caught 
all three games of this series. Yeah, James Shields has been on the disabled list just a couple of times in his career. That was way back in 04 and 05. Now Boer mired in a bit of a skid, one for his last 16. Swings through a breaking ball. He might get a steady diet of that and the James Shields changeup. Maybe I should have stayed with the breaking ball or change up. He went with the fastball. Not many fastballs are going to get by Justin Bohr. That one, 93 miles an hour. He smacks it into center field. With two out, Prado picks it up. Knows that he can go first to third easily. Garrett Balsley, pitching coach for the Padres, is out. But we have two quality, quality pitchers. Both had to feel their way around the first inning. It took Jose about 25 pitches. And Shields is up there in his pitch count. He's given up a couple of runs. Jose was able to get through it without giving up a run. Yeah, the Padres had the bags loaded with two outs. Derek Norris popped out. Here is Mathis now. And he pops one up. Salarte makes the catch. And Miami done in the first. A couple doubles set the tone from Ichiro and Miguel Rojas. Derek Dietrich a sack fly. Nicely done. It's 2 0. For Miami and Jose Fernandez getting ready to go. Jed Jerko, Alexi Amarista, and James Shields for San Diego. Jerko has had a nice series. He suddenly has perked up. Eight for his last 20. Jose buzzes him with a fastball. Now remember, Jerko, the last time these two teams, or that's actually the last time Jose pitched against the Padres. Jose was pitching with a damaged elbow. It hurt. He pitched anyways. 
And that was the last time he would pitch before Tommy John surgery. And Jerko ended up with a grand slam and a home run. He's homered twice against Jose. Yeah, he had six RBIs in that game. Five earned runs and the two home runs by Jerko. Fastball foul back. Couple strikeouts and a walk in that first inning. This is the inning you'd like to see Jose just get established with some nice rhythm. See if he stays fastball. He did. That pop up will reach the seats. It's like Dad brought his glove. Made the play. Got his hat, got his Marlins t shirt. The man that has come prepared. And is protecting the family. It's good to see. The defector makes an appearance there. Sharp slider that Jerko swings through. What a story the Mets are. How about Lucas Duda last night? Two homers and a big RBI double. Mets and Marlins tomorrow night, 7-10 start. All you can eat, KMB Frank's peanuts, popcorn, and nachos, and Pepsi Aquafina for just 30 bucks. Fastball in. Of course, all first responders with ID get complimentary tickets on South Florida Heroes Monday, presented by Outback. Lucas Duda last night. How about Lucas Duda the last week? Yeah. Well, I mean, last night he knocked in every run. Yeah, he was a, a single man wrecking crew. But eight home runs in his last seven games. And the for Mets Duda. are a game back of the Nationals. Amarista. Just missing a little bit off the plate. Have those standings. A strike. And the national game Sunday night has Washington in New York. Zimmerman against Cindergard. Three two. Get over there. Roller to first four to the bag. Steps on the bag. And today may be the biggest game ever at City Field. Right? I mean, let's check with our Mets insider. John Chimchuk, who's our baseball historian today, is uh, one of our Mets insiders. Biggest game for the Mets at City Field. Chance to tie. Draw even with the Nationals. They beat him. We're getting a casual nod. Yes. And he's hopeful that it won't be come two, three weeks, that there'll be more down the road. Ah! Shields takes a strike. This is where an at bat with Shields, who hasn't had many over his career, Jose would like to put him away quickly. Ah! And so far, so good. Two quick strikes. With a big rip on a, on an 0 2 slider. Well, his, uh, <laughs> his cousin Aaron Rowan, certainly, uh, I'm sure those two have had some talks about hitting. Shields was a, a great high school athlete.
That's fastball. That's strike three. Jose goes one, two, three through the Padres in the second. Two nothing, Miami. By Toyota Let's Go Places by Vico Painting Contractors, a commercial painting company, delivers top quality work, excellent customer satisfaction. Find out more at VicoPainting.com and by AutoNation. Save on over 70,000 vehicles now. Visit us online at AutoNation.com. With Tommy Hutton, Rich Waltz, and the much anticipated return. Of Tootie Fruity the Clown. A lot of kids here. It's a bouncer out to short. Echeverria. Wow. That's close. Wow, that was close. I think the Marlins are going to look at it. Echeverria didn't put up an argument. Bang, bang. And back to the glove before the foot. You got to like the fact, and you noted it yesterday, Echeverria is tired right now. This is a time of the year. For a guy like Etch who plays every day, has really got to grind it. And he busted it up the line. They did. You you certainly like that, and everyone in that dugout appreciates that as well. Now Jose with a smile on his face. Hunting for a fastball. Jose, a, a spirited round of batting practice yesterday, feeding some balls the Clevelanders' way. He has homered and he has a double. Those are his two hits in 12 at bats. Yeah, it's always fun watching uh, Jose take batting practice. He, he enjoys his time getting his cuts. Talked about Jose not looking sharp in his last start. There's his abuela on the left, his mother. Jose reaches out, liner to right. Kemp is there and he makes the catch. I think you could say the same about James Shields. He doesn't look all that sharp here in the second. Fox Sports supports, proud to team up with Boys and Girls Clubs of America, Boys and Girls Club. Help young people to reach their full potential as productive, caring, and responsible citizens through programs that promote character and leadership, education, healthy lifestyles, and more. For more information, visit foxsportsupports.com. Ichiro doubled off the glove of Will Venable to open the scoring in the first. He would score on Miguel Rojas's double. 
Very nice crowd here on this Sunday afternoon. Bark in the Park Day. Some nice crowds out in, in right field. No doubt many, Tommy, are here to uh, revel in the aura that is Tutti Fruity, the balloon blowing clown. One flip I was going to lead more because those A starting, but uh, I, I, I can see where you're going. That's the, the Marlin marketing folk have yet to pick up on Tutti Fruity Day. And they've, they've just stuck with Jose Day. Just fine with us. James Shields has pitched uh, so many games in Miami. He had five starts, was four and one at Sun Life. And one and oh, and one start, previous start here at Marlins Park. Counts full. Struck him out. Ichiro bows his head. He's not real pleased. And that is way, way out. That's a that's a tough strike three call. Two nothing Miami. He's got a nice uh, balloon. A minion, I believe. Very popular right now. Will Venable, young Erebus Salarte, and Matt Kemp. Top of the order for the Padres, who are at 51 and 53. Venable and Salarte have been a big part of them getting off base. Liner to left. Dietrich there. Makes a catch. But out here in the third. You can tweet your strongest fan photo. Use hashtag FL Day Strong Fan. Might see yourself in an upcoming telecast. Or if you dress as a clown and you make cool balloon animals, you're probably going to see yourself in the telecast anyways. Salarte, who's hot, eight games straight, singled in the first. And he's done damage in those eight games, 13 hits, five for extra bases. Boy, he has such a great mound presence. We, we talk about that often with. Different pitches. There's that changeup. He's uh, starting to incorporate that a little bit more. But he gets it, gets his sign. He's ready to go. Aggressive on the mound. 
You don't often say of a pitcher he pitches with great energy. That's more for usually talk about a player. Right. Yeah. But Jose pitches with great energy. That's why I think he brings it out in the rest of the ball club when he pitches too. <laughs> he kind of struck a pose and held it. One red flag as you look at that score box lower left. This is pitch number 50. There's one out in the third. As we told you, his last time out, he threw 99 pitches, and that a season high. Misses down low. It's not uncommon. For a pitcher coming off Tommy John surgery in his first year after surgery to struggle with consistency and command. Wayne Rosenthal certainly knows that. He'll be joining us in the fourth. Yeah, I think if you followed, and, and his recovery was even different because he had the entire offseason, if you followed Matt Harvey and his starts, he's. Uh, you know, he's had periods where he went through the, the lack of command, uh, the pitch count getting up. Now Matt Kemp. That last game against Washington, Jose had 51 pitches through the first three innings. Lasted six. I would think as a hitter, aside from the stuff that he throws, that delivery and that quick, energetic burst off the rubber, it's got to be pretty unnerving and not easy to time or pick up. No, it's not. And it's just part of his uh, delivery that makes him so tough with the stuff he has. Think about it too, with the recovery, with the with the rehab games. He hasn't been in this situation. He hasn't been in. If he was in the first inning, bases loaded, trying to get a major league hitter out. So these are all things he's dealing with, having been off almost 12, 12 to 14 months. Moore threw it back to Jose just like Jose threw it to Boar. <laughs> Very nice. Justin Boar has a, a nice dry sense of humor. Been around him a little bit. One and two. Matt Kemp up. Here's a look at, at, at Jose coming at the hitter. And obviously in slow motion, but it's quick. A great burst of power. He's so strong in the lower half. Doing a nice job of fighting fastballs up. Yeah, and that pitch count just keeps rising. Marlins last night, despite the loss, got four really nice innings from Adam Conley and Chris Reed in his major league debut. Wow. It's close. Jose wanted it. Out. Good call by Adrian Johnson. A lot 
Liner out there, Rojas to first. And a double play ends the Padres third. Nice at bat by Kemp, fought off a lot of pitches. But a 4-3 double play ends it. Afternoon, Dick Enberg, the longtime voice of the San Diego Padres, uh, six years here, but longtime baseball voice because he was with the Angels back in the 60s into the 70s as well, uh, going into the Hall of Fame, the Ford Frick nominee this year. And Dick's first entrance to California, ironically, was not as a broadcaster. He was a health science professor at Sir San Fernando Valley State College, where he was also the assistant baseball coach and learned a lot of lessons. He told me that. He uses still today that he remembers his first love of baseball came right from there. But Dick told me that weekend last week, you see that drive to right, was the best weekend of his life in Cooperstown. And he said, I've had a lot of good weekends. It's called Super Bowls and major events, of course, across the sporting world. He was a first class citizen. He said, he, I didn't spend my entire career in baseball, which I thought might hurt me, like many have that have gotten to the Hall of Fame. But it was my first love, and I had a chance to do it over many decades on national and local levels. So congratulations. That was pretty amazing. Best weekend he's ever had. Cooperstown last week, guys. Now, I've had some pretty good weekends, but I'm sure I haven't had weekends like Dick Enberg has had. Not like that, no. no. Here's Yelich. I think when, uh, when we're in Atlanta, we're going to get an opportunity to uh, have on the air with us John Smoltz for an inning to uh, talk about his his Hall of Fame weekend. We're working on it. hopefully if everything lines up it'll be on a night where Jose is pitching. It, it'll either be John Smoltz or Joe Simpson. But uh, Joe won't have that uh, wow moment from the Hall of Fame. Yeah, he's a pretty funny guy. <laughs> he's one of our favorites. So I, 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 I go with uh, Joe. I'm, I'm cool with Joe. Tapper out short. Amarista first. And there's two outs. James Shields looks a lot more like James Shields here in the second and the third inning. That series starts tomorrow night, and it should be a lot of fun. They are hot right on the tail a game back of the Washington Nationals. All the action on Half Price Tuesdays. Next Half Price Tuesdays coming up. That Mets game, Half Price Lexus Legends Platinum Tickets. Great discounts on tickets in several other categories. Go to Marlins.com today. Today, here in Miami, Bark at the Park. Kids Sunday, all kinds of stuff, and a pop up. That would be Jerko makes the catch. That's a six pitch inning from James Shields. Two nothing, Miami, onto the fourth.
Raven from the Rays, but the Ninja Rhino and the Giraffe, I got no clue. But some magical. I think I spotted a Greensboro Grasshopper. Bad, uh, bad trip. The, the guy with the flaming head, I don't know either. Ah! Jose Fernandez back to work. There's a grasshopper from Greensboro. Marlins minor league affiliate. Well, we saw Shields put together six pitch inning. It's the type of inning Jose would love to have. Justin Upton, Yonder Alonso, Derek Norris for the Padres. We had a couple of hits and a walk, loaded the bases in the first. Fernandez got out of that inning. And he strikes out Upton to open the fourth. And the biggest concern right now for Miami and for Jose 61 pitches with one out here in the fourth inning. He'd love to see Jose get at the very least through six. And he would. Tell you he wants to get through nine. There is Alonzo. Now, one guy he hasn't had any trouble against is Justin Upton. He's thrown six pitches and he struck him out twice. Six strikes. Yonder Alonzo, another story. Walked him in the first inning. <laughs> they come in all shapes and sizes. This is a, a for the Humane Society a, a great day. All the proceeds from the tickets for the dogs and their owners go to the Humane Society. There are a lot of adoptions on this day. It's the second one that the Marlins have hosted this year. Always well attended. Whatever reason, Jose's having trouble throwing strikes to Alonzo. Jose's sweating, and his last start, it was a humid atmosphere inside Marlins Park, and it feels that way, not to that extent, but it's some humidity here. A liner to center, Alonzo's got himself a hit. Bet series starts tomorrow night. South Florida Honda dealers get you ready for it. And they'll do it at 6.30 with Marlins Live. Craig Minervini, Jeff Conine, Bartolo Colon, and Tom Kohler. But Tom Kohler's had some uh, matchups against the bets. He's had some good, some bad. I would imagine. Mets will be uh, flying Bartolo Colon ahead of the club, given the fact that they play that night game tonight. Jonathan Nice for the Mets on Tuesday, Matt Harvey on Wednesday. The Marlins, the indications yesterday that it would be Brad Hands on the Tuesday night. They're still listing it in their notes, the Marlins are, as to be announced. David Phelps is slated to go on Wednesday. Little pop. Rojas is there. He makes the catch. Norris out number two before Jed Jerko steps in the box. We have this legal reminder. This copyright telecast presented by the authority of the Marlins may not be reproduced, retransmitted in any form. It counts the descriptions of the game. May not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Miami Marlins. Ah! D. Gordon with the day off. Although, if it's a tight game, wouldn't be surprised to see him late. Pinch hitter. Thought it was a nice shot after a, a tough loss last night. Jeff Conine made mention of it as well. D. Gordon, Christian Yelich, just sitting talking in the in the dugout after the game for a while. It wasn't a brief moment. 
97 high heats. Jerko strikes out. Jose's in command. High pitch count, but dealing a shutout. It's 2 0. For West Kendall Toyota. Park at the park, and you always love the ice cream helmets that are adapted to fit any pooch. Not as a protective helmet, but a great accoutrement. Look at that. Look at that. Now she's actually looks like they cut the back of it off to fit. That's a sweet look. <laughs> the ears come right out. No ear flaps. That dog apparently grandfathered in from the old days. Ah! That's actually in real time. Shake it out. A little slobber. Ah! There's a strike. A bark at the park. Archie Prado, Justin Bohr, Jeff Mathis. James Shields, a rough first, but since then, he's been back to being James Shields, and he bounces that one up in the play. By the way, in the cavalcade of mascots, I identified one as the guy with the flaming head. And I apologize profoundly to all you Fort Lauderdale Striker fans. I had not seen your mascot before. It's hot shot. Yeah, but he still has a flaming head. Every mascot has a name, Tommy. That one is Hot Shot. Hey, by the way, a really interesting relationship. And Dan Jennings, Marlins manager, certainly has his eye on on James Shields. Dan Jennings was the uh, Tampa Bay Rays scouting director back in 2000 when Shields was drafted, drafted out of uh, Santa Clarita High School in California, and so their relationship goes back a ways. And DJ tells the story. They stole him from Skip Skip Burtman, the coach of the uh, LSU Tigers, because that's where he was going. So he's known James Shields, who he said had that same changeup in high school. Justin Bohr trying to get to that change up. Count is one and two. Shields alma mater in Santa Clarita Hart High School has produced a lot of other uh, talented athletes. Kyle Bowler. Quarterback Todd Zeal, Kevin Millar.
talked about his cousin Aaron Rowan. Big year for Shields was 2011. He was an all star. Won 16 games and had an ERA at 282 for the Rays. Venable circles and makes the catch. And since the two runs in the first, Shields has not given up a hit. The other thing, too, Rich, and we touched on it early with Shields in that 11 season. Had 11 complete games. So that arm has thrown a lot of pitches. And there were questions as to the four year contract he received from San Diego. Here's Jeff Mathis. What? Jeff Mathis. Not having a great year at the plate, not known for his bat. John Chipchuck helps us statistically producing a Jeff Mathis note. He's hit 41 career home runs off of 40 different pitchers in his big league career. And the pitcher that he's doubled up on, Felix Hernandez. Uh, he owns the king. I think when you look at Shields's record this year, no surprise. He's going to be in double figures in wins. Once again, he's making his 23rd start. All things uh, go well, he'll get to 30 again. And those are things he's done for eight consecutive years. A great postseason in 08 with the Rays. Strikes out Mathis. James Shields has retired 10 straights. Tommy, every mascot has a name, a hot shot, and a soul. Out so far, and a guy that's watching, and he's got to be pretty proud of what he sees. It's Wayne Rosenthal, who is a pitching coordinator in the minors for the Marlins, world champion pitching coach back in 2003. And you had a big hand in, in Jose's rehab situation. Yeah, my job was being the rehab coordinator was to monitor his throwing during spring training and when he was on his way back through the minor leagues. So I followed his starts, bullpens, 
uh, anything he needed to do uh, when the team was on the road. He was up in Jupiter with me. Now you've done this with other pitchers. Absolutely. Did um, it come back from Tommy John? I'm doing the minor leaguers. Um, right. When Henderson Alvarez came up there, he threw a couple of pins with me. Morris, uh, a couple of uh, Kelly was up there when D. Gore and I was hit ground balls and throw batting practice to those guys. Um, even Kozar, when he was up, when he was um, going through his vertigo, he came up and threw some pins for me. So uh, that's what I, that's my job. But mostly through the minor leagues, when the big leagues come down, I take care of them when they're there. What did you learn about Jose Fernandez that you didn't know during the course of his rehab? I, will, I honestly, I watched him grow up. Um, you know, being a young kid with all the talent, I think this injury humbled him, and it showed him he was always a hard worker. I think he needed to work hard to get back from this because he was worried from the get-go, and all his throwing, all his workouts, everything he did was unbelievable. I mean, you always say the Tommy John injuries, you're as good as your your work ethic coming back. Uh, Josh Johnson was a good work ethic when he came back. Jose was above the charts as far as his throwing and his makeup. I think he grew up a lot being 23 and what he's been through. This really humbled him and made him uh, think a little harder about the game. Now you've been able to watch him in his starts since he's come back. Uh, what have you seen early on? Anything surprised you? You know, I, I think through his five rehab starts, um, he had a, he had a goal in his mind each start. Uh, first start was fastball changeups, not a lot of breaking balls. Uh, we worked very hard on his breaking ball in between those two, the first and second start, and that breaking ball came into play. Um, but just watching him work is is unreal uh, as far as what he does and, uh, with his bullpens, with his schemes, and with uh, the rehab coming back has been remarkable. Just in my book, watching him do it. Alexi Amarista. With a leadoff triple, that snaps an 0 for 25 for Amarista, and now the Padres are poised to get their first run. There's nobody out. Amarista is 90 feet away. James Shields, and then Will Venable, and Erebus Salarte. That's going to upset Jose right there, giving up the leadoff triple to a guy who's really struggled over the last week or so. I mean, for him, he's, we, we talked about during his minor league starts to try to get that first hitter out as quick as you can, and I guarantee he's upset about it. Hopefully, he doesn't try to strike the next three guys out and overthrow. The first one is Shields. He struck out back in the second. But the only thing we've seen the last two starts here is the command hasn't been there the way it was the first couple. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I watched the game before this, and I'm watching this one. Um, he's throwing a lot of pitches. In the innings, uh, a lot of deep counts, a lot of 2 0 counts, and working his way back. Um, but as far as I'm looking and what I saw on TV and what I'm seeing here, he's not missing by much. It's just that he might be picking up his own a little bit, and it caused him to get into some deep counts. That's common? Yeah. Among it's guys that come back from this surgery? Well, I, I think, you know, I think the first couple starts, he wanted to throw strikes, and he did. He threw strikes. Now he's into his own. He's starting to feel it coming back from the injury, and he's in the sixth start. Uh, you know, one day, each day, five days is always different. You know, one day is good, one, one start is bad. But he hasn't had a bad start. If you really think about it, he's just throwing a lot of pitches. He's always done the job as far as getting the guys out when he needed to. Well, he needed to get a strikeout there. He got it. Now a tougher hitter in Venable with the runner at third and one out. And, and what's amazing, he, he's doing the same thing as he did in his last start. And we were talking about, well, his command's not there, this and that. Again, he has seven strikeouts today. He's given up just four hits. He to this point is yet to allow a run. That's I mean you look at the bottom line. You know you may give up some base runners, but if you make pitches when you need it, uh, you don't let the runs come in. It's, it looks like a good game because you're putting zeros up. Where he gets frustrated, he'd probably like to at least take a game into the eighth or ninth inning. Yes, he would. I mean, he's <laughs> he's always even in the rehab starts when he got this pitch count, he always wanted to pitch one more inning, you know, and he didn't need to. Uh, but he really wants to go deep in the game. He's always said that he never likes to be taken out of a game Even in between the innings when after the third out he's not like he always wants to get that one more We've had some great shots of him over the last couple of years in the dugout when he's come out of a game Where we know he still wants to stay yes. in the game. Yes, and he's been taken out Yeah, he does not like to be even like I said in the rehab star We took him out with uh, two outs in one inning after two strikeouts just because his pitch count ran out, he looked at me and I went, "Hey, I'm, I'm just doing my job." <laughs> the they told me the pitch count. I'm the, I'm the messenger. Don't don't kill the messenger. So he's one and one on Venable. Marista's at third. And now it's one and two. What's he thinking now? One and two. I, I mean, I think you look at this situation, right? Even though he's a leadoff guy, you give him three pitches to try to get him. 
because if you do walk him, you set yourself up for a double play. And if he swung a pitch like that, you never know, he might swing in another one. You know, and get that strike us. Now he has two outs, man, on third, he can go after the next guy. Let's see what Venable gets. Breaking ball pulled, foul. Wayne Rosenthal, the rehab coordinator, pitching uh, coach in 2003. Miami won a world championship. You had quite a pitching staff at that point, didn't you? I got handed a pretty good staff. <laughs> I, I, said, I honestly say young, young, but but a very good staff and a lot of talent on that on that team. Fastball up, and it's two and two. And and you get to work with Jack McKeon. Yes, I did. I was one of the. It was a very, very good experience with Jack McKeon. Uh, with, with all his knowledge and what he knows about the game, I learned a lot from him within the two years. It was an awesome experience. 2-2 two, two coming. There's that breaking ball, and it's popped to right. Good speed at third. Ichiro lines it up. Amarista tags, and he won't try it. Ichiro throws a dart. Show that 41-year-old arm off. <laughs> Jose is two thirds of the way there from holding on to this shutout. Well, just per perfect mechanics by Ichiro. Surrounds the ball, picks it, momentum coming. And he knows on this throw, he doesn't have to worry about a cutoff man. There's already an out, nobody's going to advance. So he goes all the way in the air to Mathis with a chest high strike. Now Solarte, one of the hotter hitters the Padres have. And he takes a strike. He is singled and walked. And right now, Jose's fired up. He's isn't fired he? up. You saw him walk. You saw him walk. Well, he knows. I mean, Solarte has got, has got a walk and a base hit off him. And uh, he knows Kemp's on deck, even though Kemp's a tough hitter. So I think he's really fired up to get him now in this situation. Fastball misses away. Now, this is probably not the first time you've heard or seen Wayne Rosenthal. Because uh, you've been with us the whole way uh, from the very start of Jose's rehab. We've had reports from Jupiter. Right. So we appreciate you being our, our correspondent. No problem. Hey, I, I tell you what, it was fun. Uh, Jose's, Jose's great. Working with him has been a great experience for me. Um, and I enjoyed it. It kind of broke the monotony of doing my job because I get to travel with him to different places. <laughs> been to Port Charlotte, Melbourne, and to Jacksonville. So it was kind of it was kind of fun to get, get away for a little bit. It sounds like your next... Uh, Project's going to be Henderson Alvarez. Yeah, but it's not going to be for a little bit though, because you know I think during the off season probably won't be out until January, February, and then um, when spring training comes around, if that's what they if that's what they want me to do, um, that's what I'll do. Um, I was told that part of my job was to follow Jose around. If they tell me I have to follow Henderson around or wherever, wherever else, that's what that's what I got to do. Whatever they want me to. do. Two balls, two strikes. Jose Fernandez, the leadoff triple. Amarista still at third. Solarte waits. The 2 2. He got him. And Jose gets out of the jam. And a, and a proud uh, teacher here watching. That's going to be fun. You know what? Uh, watching him when I saw him in Greensboro and Jupiter, he would try to overthrow and strike everybody out. And it shows that he doesn't have to try to strike people out. He gets the two strikes and gets them. And get the fly ball, not worried about that run. But when he found two strikes, he went for he went for it, so he needed to do that. Good Thank inning. You. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for the visit. Good work with Jose. And Thanks, I see sir. you down the road. Thank you very much.
Nothing. And just four hits allowed. But look at the pitches. 94 pitches in five innings. Dan Jennings talking with Jose Fernandez. Fernandez is due up second in this inning. He's about to emerge on deck. Echeverria leads it off. James Shields fastball for a strike. Yeah, there's been a lot of uh, a lot of stress out there in the five innings. Jose's had to work for the five shutout innings today. Eight strikeouts, a couple walks, and Echeverria swings and misses. On the other side, James Shields, uh, a bumpy start. He gave up the two doubles and the two runs right out of the chute. Since then, he's retired 10 straight. And Shields, four innings, those two runs, just three hits. Echeverria in the center field, that's a base hit. So Etch is aboard. Here comes Jose. Here come the Mets starting tomorrow. And on Wednesday, when that series closes, kids eat free. 7 10 start each child with a ticket. 12 and under, get a coupon for a free KMB Frank bag of Frito Lay chips, small Pepsi or Aquafina water. Get your tickets. Kids eat free Wednesday. It's the Mets. And the Mets think they have young pitching. <laughs> James Shields it has maybe the best pickoff move of any right hander in the game. We always talk about lefty pickoff moves, but yeah, Shields. This, this is good. I think this is a great scenario with the leadoff base hit allowing Jose to try to move Echeverria into scoring position. But you're right, be careful if you're a runner over at first. Since 2006, 33 pickoffs. His 10 year career more than any right handed pitcher. Jose pulls it back and pops it foul and out of play. Now, on the other hand, with Shields, yes, he's quick. Jose has the ability to try to slap one. But with Shields, even though he's quick to first, once he unfolds and gets ready to go to the plate, you can get a good jump off. That one punted foul in the count now 0 and 2. We apologize for any uh, untoward language that is picked up around home plate. FCC is hoping that Jose gets this bunt down. And he does. Shields to first. Nicely done. Did a much better job there than BK Kim. <laughs> yes, that was a great moment in Marlins television history. A foiled BK Kim bunt attempt. Got a nice Thankfully, pitch to bunt too. He got a nice slow breaking ball. Thankfully, I don't think that game is archived on the MLB uh, TV app. Now Ichiro, he hit the drive to center that glanced off of Venable's glove for a double. Miguel Rojas then doubled him home. There, Dietrich scored the other run on a sack fly. And we talked about Ichiro's. Career against Shields 20 for 67. So a lot of matchups between these two. It's funny, we have seen Ichiro in spots like this actually change his swing. Try to lift the ball and drive it rather than just slap it and dash. Which has kind of been his trademark swing a lot in his 15 years. His career numbers with runners in scoring position. Two and two.
Here's our new buddy. The guy with the flaming head. Hot shot. Got jammed. Alonzo gets to the bag. And Jabri is 90 feet away. And here is Miguel Rojas. If you went up and down the Marlins lineup, you said, all right, who's the hottest hitter? Amazingly, it's Miguel Rojas, even though he hasn't played in a week. He's doubled and flied out. He is seven for his last ten. And remember, Rojas recalled late June, June 27. Terrific defender, but he was hitting 300 in Triple A. Ball gets loose. Echeverria started, stopped. He would have been out. Athletic play by both Norris and Shields. What great play by Norris. Not knowing whether that runner's coming or not. He's got to get over and then flip it to his pitcher. Yeah, there was indecision, but I think even if he had gone, Shields was right there and ready. Rojas is yelling for him to come to the plate. Called strike. Rojas didn't like it. You see the reaction. It was a strike. Letter high, and it caught enough of the plate. It's not a comfortable strike for a hitter, though, is it? No, and it's one that's not called as often. Little tapper, third base side. Salarte makes the play. Padres get the out. Marlins do not get the run. Shields and Jose, a tight one. It's two nothing. Checkers, mix and match our famous Big Buford and Big Chicken Deluxe. Get two for five bucks, Checkers. It's in the bag. By Subaru of Pembroke Pines, price, service, selection. You're going to love us. And by the Florida Department of Transportation, reminding you, drive sober or get pulled over. And by Orkin, pest control, down to a science. You gotta have that, right? A doggy relief area. You gotta have that. I, I wonder if they feel comfortable on the astroturf. It's uh, not easy on uh, on their ankles, but you know what? I think this turf's a little quicker than what they're used to. Matt Kemp for San Diego. Jose Fernandez ventures into the sixth, and he does so with a high pitch count. Breaking ball fouled at the plate. Miami's bullpen inactive right now. You see Jose is four pitches away from eclipsing the 100 pitch mark. 
He came back after that leadoff triple by Amarista and probably made as good a pitches to the next three hitters that he'd made the entire game. I think he knows the situation he's in here just to get through this inning. Justin Bohr makes the catch. Matt Kemp out number one. So Kemp, Upton, Alonzo, the three best bats the Padres have in terms of power and pop. And Upton is the guy that Fernandez not only has handled tonight, but in his career, we talked about Upton and the Braves as a Brave not having much success against Jose. He's now 0 for 9 with six strikeouts. Jose's throwing what? Seven pitches to Upton? All strikes. <laughs> It's 0 and 2. It goes through your head if you're up to. Who's pitching tomorrow from Milwaukee? <laughs> Nine pitches to Upton. Wow. Nine strikes, three strikeouts. He's 0 for 10 with seven strikeouts in his career. Yeah, he just, Jose just decided, it's not going to waste anything, go with the slider. Yeah, the Padres move on from here and play a four game series in Milwaukee after today. We're talking about Upton and the Braves. Jose against the Braves, a three and one record and an 0-93 ERA in four starts. Next start is against the Braves. He's had trouble with Alonzo, walked him in the first, fell behind three and one, and Alonzo lined a single to center in the fourth. Bouncer under the glove of Bohr and down the line it goes. Ichiro to pick it up. Alonzo arrives at seconds. But well, tough part about that 104 pitches, Jose could have been out of the inning. And not an easy play, but it has to be made. It'll probably be an error charge to Justin Bohr. His glove came up and the ball stayed down. And Bohr knows it. It's an error on Bohr. Remember in the fifth, San Diego got a leadoff triple from Alexei Amarista. And Fernandez kept that runner at third with a pair of strikeouts and a shallow fly ball. Here's Norris. Strike. There's been some good and some bad defensively from Justin Bohr. He's made some nice plays. That's his fifth error. You put that in perspective. Danny Echevarria has made four. D. Gordon has made four. In more demanding positions and positions, and they get a more, more activity, and they've certainly played more games than Justin Bohr. Norris behind it, the count 0 and 2. Crowd trying to get Jose through it. Nine strikeouts. 
0-2. Stays at 0-2. Throwing hard. Still busted that fastball in good at 96. By inning, yeah, there really wasn't a, a breather in there. The fourth, probably his easiest inning. And he got helped out in the third by that line drive that turned into a double play off the bat of Matt Kemp. That one fouled back to the screen. Again, and the numbers are pretty incredible. This is start number 24. In this ballpark for Jose Fernandez in his career, the Marlins are 20 and 3 in the previous 23, and he's never lost a game. It's 15 and 0. Oh. 2. Mathis has to smother it. If he's able to strike out Norris, it would be number 10. It would be his ninth game of his career, ten or more strikeouts. Norris won't go down easy. Brian Morris in Miami's pen heating up. If Jose does not get Norris, he won't face Jerko. This is going to be the last hitter he faces. Right now he can't finish him. The most pitches that Jose's ever thrown in a game was last May, last May 4th against the Dodgers. He threw 114. His 104th pitch scooted under the club of Justin Bohr. 2-2. Got him! Tenth strikeout. Jose Strands, Alonzo at seconds. A lot of effort, a lot of pitches, but six shutout innings. Double digit strikeouts in line for his 16th consecutive win at home.
that we can throw six shutout innings, strike out ten, and be in line for the win. That's exactly where Jose Fernandez stands right now. Christian Yelich, Derek Dietrich, Martin Prado to face James Shields. Bottom six in Miami. Jose brings his uh, home earned run average down to 1.14. And he knows he earned it today. He had to work today. Yelich takes the ball. It's 2 0. Oh. Couple ground ball outs. The first was very constructive. With the runner at second, nobody out. Yelich pulled the ball to the right side. That was Miguel Rojas. He would score on Dietrich's sacrifice fly. Now Yelich is looking at a 3 0 -oh pitch. See James Shields at 73 pitches. Here in the sixth. And Yelich walks. Let's check in with Craig Vitterbini. Craig? Well, the great Dane is the 115 pounder. Some great dogs. Another big night. There's a great Pyrenee up here, a white one that's 125 pounds. And then there's little, what's this dog? Kiki. Kiki. And how much does Kiki go? She goes about 13. Very cute with the Mike. I don't know. Can you see the Miami logo there? How long did it take to get her dressed? About five minutes. Okay. Yeah. Did you join the game? Yes, she is. You too. Thank you. And then we have a famous dog here, Lemon. Who you may have seen on our pregame show. This is Lemon here. And how old is Lemon there, Miss? Lemon is four years old. Oh, it's Jessica Blaylock's dog. Four years old? Yes, four years old. That's full size, uh, Jessica? She, apparently, she wants to be on camera. She's got something to say. Yes, she is full size. Lemon well, is about, what, uh, two pounds? No, she's about five pounds. Oh, she's up to five. Had a big uh, hot dog here at the game. <laughs> you, uh, Jessica, you dressed similar to Lemon here. Yes, I did. I uh, have to admit that I planned that. It is, um, this is my life, people. This is my life. Lemon has been, you were concerned about Lemon with all these other dogs here, but so far, so good. As you can see, she's, she's super friendly. Can you tell by that ferocious growl how much she loves other people and other dogs? Oh, I, I didn't pick that up. She's shivering. Her favorite. <laughs> Actually, here. <laughs> and I thought she was going to be nervous, but she's doing the show right now. She doesn't like me. I could tell she's looking at me. How can she not like you? Everyone likes Craig Minervini. This is the first, people. This is the first. <laughs> All right, I better, I better move away before I get bit over here. Very nice. That's the un most unfriendly dog at five pounds I've ever met. <laughs> I'm going to go back to the Great Dane, guys. <laughs> uh, that's funny. tremendous watchdog that <laughs> Jessica had going uh, there. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that dog, that dog did not like Craig. Derek Dietrich's up. Dietrich a sacrifice fly. He's popped out. Yelich, great speed at first, but remember Shields has that dynamite pickoff move. Dietrich trying to push it through the left side, actually swings and misses and strikes out. T Mobile always wants you to hashtag it. NFL Data Strong fan, and it's your chance. Feature an upcoming telecast, Tina, who has uh, an affinity for Jose Fernandez. Now, Prado. You feel back in a line for Prado, who can hit the ball just about anywhere, and usually does. And a quiet series for him. He's 0 for 9. Can't rule out a little movement here. Maybe hit and run. Talk about Prado against Shields. Talk about Shields' good move. He's trying to take one that way. All shapes and sizes. There's the Dachshund section. 
doggy seat cushions. They're, they're just happy to, to be inside. Nice controlled temperature here at Marlins Park. Any foul balls up in the dog section? That could be mayhem, actually, if you think about it. And 500 dogs trying to fetch a ball. And entertaining. <laughs> my my money would be on lemon, though. <laughs> Boy, get away from lemon. Shields on over to first. It's a lot going on at the ballpark. It's really the Marlins' birthday, thus all the mascots. It's a kid's Sunday. Tutti Fruity the Clown. Oh. Jose's heroes are here. All the dogs and their owners. Say Jose didn't let let them down either. Five dollar mimosas in the Clevelander. You know, if I was a fan today, I wouldn't know which way to go. Yelich got a good jump, and it's hammered to center, and it falls. Yelich didn't stop on his way to third. Nicely done by both Christian Yelich and Martin Prado. Well, running on this pitch, not a hit run, a run and hit. And there's a couple of things you think about if you're Christian Yelich. First great hitting by Prado. He gets there. He picks up the ball, he turns it on. You have to decide, number one, is that going to drop? Even if it doesn't, you keep going because you've gone beyond the point of no return. And he picks it up, it drops, he ends it up at third base. That's a great point. Yeah. If the ball is caught, there's no way Yelich can stop reverse course and get back anyways. So why not just keep going full speed ahead? Now Bohr was one for two. Ball in. Shields gets a strike. Remember, Bohr got that base hit in the first inning on a fastball. Not sure if he's seen a fastball since. Done a nice job this year with runners in scoring position. Justin Bohr, a 315 average. Job by Norris there to block that 58 foot curveball. The ball in a strike. Yelich walked. He was on the move when Prado singled the center. Miami five hits in the ball game. Looking for something he can drive and get out of the infield right now. Toyota Trends, Pat Murphy, his bench coach Dave Roberts. On August 2nd, in the last five years, now we talked about it in San Diego, touched upon it at the start of this series. For whatever reason, the last three years, the Padres have been very, very good in the second half and have had good Augusts, good Septembers. If they can have another one of those, certainly will make things interesting in San Diego at the end of September, early October. They have, as you look ahead at their schedule, a pretty favorable schedule. You mentioned they, they go on to Milwaukee, four games. Milwaukee in transition, they've made some moves. Then they go home to play the Phillies. Philly's going to cool off sooner or later. The Reds come to town. They're in a little bit of a flux. Then they go to Colorado. So they have a pretty good schedule. You saw that wild card race, Arizona and San Diego. Both six and a half back. Slow tapper. Alonzo's coming home. The slide, he is out. Yelich tried to get the hand in. Great play by Alonzo and Norris with the tag. Miami. With runners first and second. Now two outs. But you saw the steady diet of curveballs and changeups. Curveballs tap to Alonso and he makes a great play. Whoa, that's close. 
That's really close. It might be worth a look. It is, and the Marlins are going to challenge. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of first base, but he can't make that play. A good throw, but you saw was the tag applied before Yelich got his hand on the plate. So a challenge by Miami. Obviously, a run is in the balance. And certainly a, a worthwhile challenge. Here's a look again. Let's see when the hand touches the plate. Man, that's close. It is, and, and you can't really tell from that angle. And remember, it's got to be conclusive, definitive to overturn the original call. We'll effort to get you some other angles and looks along the way. In New York, of course, they're looking not only at all the looks that we had on Marlins television, but also on the San Diego Padres broadcast on Fox Sports San Diego. Also, and this is a, something that people need to remember, and I think broadcasters as well, there are a couple of other cameras. There's the tag. I don't know from that angle. It looks a little more in the Marlins favor by the time the glove hits the chest. There are a couple of angles that neither telecast has that are Major League Baseball cameras that both teams and New York get to look at. Have you seen anything Tommy to. I, ha I have definitive. No, I haven't seen anything yet to make it definitive. Because it's so hard to tell from what we've seen. If a tag was applied before Yelich's hand got on the plate really hard to tell. Of course. All the replays are synced. Now watch this one. When does glove hit chest. There. And they can sync this to see where was Yelich's hand at that point. It, he's out. Yeah, he's out. It just wasn't anything definitive. And we'll see if terrific play by Alonso. If the call was confirmed or if the call stands. Call stands means there's not enough evidence. Right. Kind of what we thought. So they couldn't tell if he was out or safe. They just couldn't overturn it. So call stands. No run. And it's Mathis to face Shields. Runners first and second. Mathis off the end of the bat. Alonzo has it, shovels it to Shields, who gets the outs, and Miami comes up empty in the sixth. Marlins turn it over to their bullpen in a two-nothing lead of the Padres. Already checked the bag either. That's the Bob Euchre of dogs in the front row. Next Chevron Crazy Eights Wednesday coming up August 5th. Marlins and Mets. That's 
the Wednesday. It finishes the series. Your receipt of eight gallons of gas or more from Chevron. Bring it to the Marlins Park ticket office. Get your choice of an $18 Lexus Legends level ticket or a $28 home plate box ticket. 18 bucks for a Lexus Legends level ticket. And you can watch Matt Harvey and David Phelps on that Wednesday. Well, Jose Fernandez, six shutout innings. Brian Morris is first out of the bullpen. As the Marlins try to piece this together. Snap a four game losing streak. And get ready for the Mets. What you hope doesn't happen for the next two months is that Jose is pitching to snap a four game losing streak every time he goes out. Well, you'd like to see the Marlins have a little fun against the Mets. Play them hard. Jed Jerko, Alexi Amarista, and the pitcher spot for the Padres. Jed Jerko struck out twice against Jose. And if you asked Jose, he probably might not say right out, but I think of his 10 strikeouts. His two favorite had to be of Jerko. That's the guy on the day Jose was pitching with a, an injured elbow his last game before the surgery that got him for two home runs. Now remember the very first pitch to Jerko was a fastball up and in. So who knows, maybe a little, little purpose to it, a reminder of last year. Mike Dunn is in the bullpen. Padre bullpen getting heated up as well. You have Shields do third up this inning. That one wide of third. What's up around Major League Baseball? Huh? We've been focused on Jose and mascots and Bark at the Park, Kevin Quackenbush in the bullpen, Clevelander, all of that. Superheroes. Bernie. Well, Ocean Drive. John Carlo on the cover. Tommy Hutton is the centerfold. <laughs> two two. Chopper to third. And Prado on the first. I don't think all year. And I know Martin Prado has made some errors. He's made five. I don't think I've seen him make a bad throw. He always just gets in the right position. It's a little extra on it if he knows he has to. If he doesn't, just makes a perfect throw over the first. Arista takes away. Let's see, Amarista has tripled and bounced out. And that triple snapped a, a long over for 25. And Atlanta has a 4 2 lead over the Phillies, the Red Hot Phillies. It's top six. Yeah, Marista has been their primary shortstop. Ah! That's a position. If the Padres hang in in the next week, that's a position that AJ Perler, you would think, would try to fill in an after the trade deadline deal. Some guy that would slip through waivers. Rojas to first. Two outs. Another guy who's fun to watch defensively, Miguel Rojas. He's always, always had that ability. For as rough as it's been this year for Miami, and they are 20 under, it's the low water mark on the season. The Marlins have solved 
one piece of the puzzle, and that's defense. They've had a, a, a very good defensive year. You saw Echeverria, he's having a gold glove type season. So is Gordon, to be honest, at, at second. Prado's been an upgrade defensively at third. Behind the plate, Real Muto getting better and better. In the right, Nietzsche there and makes the catch. Brian Morris, a one, two, three, seven, seventh inning stretch, two nothing. That's milling about. Geico, Marlins moment. You know his name. Dan Ugly, Cody Ross go back to back. Consecutive pitches. Bottom of the ninth. Marlins beat the Cubs three to two. Kevin Quackenbush. Out of the Padres bullpen, seventh inning stretch. Jose Fernandez, six scoreless innings. Marlins a two nothing lead. And Quackenbush takes over for James Shields, who looked good. Marlins got a couple early runs, and that's it against Shields. Well, it's party time down on the field now. Marlins need a couple more innings from their bullpen to keep it that way. The Padres bullpen rich in this series has been tremendous. I know you and I are thinking about costumes like that for next Halloween. But Quackenbush comes in the Padre bullpen seven innings they've given up just one hit and one run that was the Derek Dietrich home run. And they've not walked a batter. And ironically that was against. The guy who's their uh, their leader their closer Craig Kimbrell. Looking around baseball at some scores. Tigers have a lead over Baltimore. How about the year JD Martinez is having? JD out of Nova Southeastern. Flanagan High School, Pembroke Pines. It is 29th home run, and Martinez with 71 RBIs. He's picking up the slack without Miguel Cabrera in the lineup. I know the Astros are doing. Pretty well without him, but still to let that guy walk out the door. That is a great, great story. Ah. 
Echeverria got a breaking ball to center. Venable is there, makes a catch. Casey McKee will get the pitch hitting assignment. He'll hit here in the seventh. Yeah, the thing that that will make it nice if the Marlins bullpen holds on and the fish get this win today is that when you win a game and a D Gordon gets the day off isn't in the lineup and a JT Real Muto. That's always a nicer feeling. You know, we had Wayne Rosenthal in the booth earlier talking about. The long road back, Jose Fernandez, reading today that AJ Burnett is out with an injury, and it may be the end of his career. 17 years for AJ Burnett. Of course, Rosenthal was a pitching coach in 03 and 04. AJ, for the first time in those 17 years, an All Star this year, and has said early in the year, he said this was probably going to be his last year anyway. And the pain is in the right elbow. Burnett had Tommy John surgery in 2003. Remember, he missed that postseason run. McKee sprays it out to second. And at his age and all that he's been able to accomplish, second Tommy John might just be the end. And he's uh, actually admitted that. So he's prepared for both. Either way, Will not be bothered by the results. Well, if you think about those big three, Josh Beckett, Brad Penny, and A.J. Burnett, of course, Beckett had a remarkable postseason career, but the the one with the lengthiest what? career, A.J. Burnett. His last start, if it is his last start, he hit his first home run in a decade, July 11th. Comeback win over the Cardinals at PNC. And then packed his bags and headed to the first All Star game of his career. Yeah, certainly Beckett's career more decorated and certainly in in 03 and then with the Red Sox. But a tremendous career. For AJ Burnett. Another injury, Andrelton Simmons. Thumb injury, not fractured, had an MRI. He may miss the uh, Marlins series coming up in Atlanta. Medical people in Atlanta are calling it a sprain. He drew a little tapper. Quackenbush off the mound gets the outs and a brief appearance by the Marlins in the bottom of the seventh. This game is headed to the eighth. It's 2 0 Miami.
waste any time. First inning, first batter. Ichiro sends one just off the glove of Will Venable for a leadoff double. He comes in to score. Good hitting by Miguel Rojas. Just like that, a one nothing lead. Rojas at second base. He's moved over nicely. Good at bat by Christian Yelich, getting Rojas to third. And guess what? He would come in to score on a sack fly off the bat of Derek Dietrich. So some really good at bats. Picking up two runs. They turned the ball over to Jose Fernandez. It was a battle. Six innings. Ten strikeouts. Jose gave up just four hits. Walked a couple and was just outstanding. So far, the bullpen's been great. Nice inning by Brian Morse. And now it's turned over to Carter Caps. Marlins have seen the back end of the Padres bullpen a couple times. Now the Marlins will try to utilize Caps and Ramos and get a win. Casey McGee's at first. Caps ah! dials up 98 with his first pitch fastball to Will Venable. Top of the order, Venable, Salarte, and Kemp. One and two. One and two. The attendance, 400 dogs for a park at the park. And all total, 25,228. And a sway and a miss. And we check in with Craig Minervini. Craig? Yes, we've got some great dogs over here. This is Nuki on our right. Big fan. Paley is first time at the Bark of the Park. Some of these dogs have been here those six, seven, eight times. What's his name again? Riley? Riley behind us. And Adam Goldberg from the Humane Society of Broward County. Big day for you guys. Huge day. We have over 400 dogs here. Great way to, to benefit the shelter. Raises a lot of money. Raises awareness. We have adoptable animals. Not here with us, but we have them at the shelter. We're located in Broward, 95 and, and Griffin Road. 95 and Griffin, if people want to adopt dogs, and sometimes they see them, and they... It's a good idea, and if they're baseball fans, even better. Yeah, yeah, and you could adopt a dog today, bring it to Bark at the Park next year, bring them out. We love to see them. A lot of the dogs here come from our shelter, so it's a, it's a great way for us to reconnect with the dogs that we care for. The Marlins have two Bark at the Parks to benefit both counties. You see that play there by Echeverria. Oh, they called him safe. They're going to maybe look at that one. That was a close play. Uh, it benefits Miami-Dade County early in the year, and the, you guys here. How big a day is this for you guys? Huge day. We, we spend all year long marketing it. We team up with the Marlins. Great way to really promote the day. And it's really exciting for us because we're able to raise money, connect with some of our, of our loyal fans, and, and get a day at the ballpark. It's a lot of fun. Congratulations. I know everybody's having a good time. Big ball game. It's a good one today. And thanks for coming out and being a, a assistant partner to the Marlins. Absolutely. Thanks. Thanks for having us. It really means a lot to us. Over 400 dogs for the uh, Broward County Humane Society. And we'll get back to Rich and Tommy. All right, thank you, Craig. Sort of like alumni weekend for the dogs, it sounds like. Some that get uh, adopted come on back. And they get to uh, reacquaint themselves, old friends. Salarte with that infield base hit, 6 for 13 in this series. How about the play by Echeverria to almost get him? Salarte gets up the line pretty quickly. I mean, there was really no thought of a play at all, and Echeverria made it close. Caps and Kemp. Oh. 
in the dirt. If you're just happening by, Jose Fernandez went six. They were not easy innings. But as, as happened his last time out against Washington on a day where you don't think Jose is all that sharp, all he does is strike out ten. He walked two. He threw a lot of pitches. 112, second most in his career. Just to get through the six. James Shields went six. Marlins got two runs against him in the first. And from that point on, he shut it down. Dale Thayer. has gone three and oh in a dangerous spot you've got Upton on deck. Remember the Padres in this nice run they've had they've won 12 of 16 7 of 8 have had some late inning heroics. The Marlins saw that in extra innings. The Mets saw it in that odd rain delay game on Thursday. Needs to find the zone. That's up and in. And a question that Marlins really haven't had to answer in this situation, Tommy, is what do you do if Carter Caps is struggling in the eighth? Now the, the, the fish have brought Ramos in at times to get four out or five out save. Mike Dunn in the bullpen available as well. They have done. You mentioned Sam Dyson earlier. He's on his way to Texas. Took the loss in the game last night. He was at times a go-to guy. Now Upton, happy to see Jose gone. He struck out three times against him on nine pitches. Breaking ball from Caps for a strike. So the trend continues. Strikes to Justin Upton. Justin Upton won the year. Struck out 107 times. There's the list. Notice uh, the youngster Chris Bryant. His average is dipped into the 240s. The Cubs. And right now the Marlins are headed out to the mound. Carter Caps and Jennings, Sean Cunningham, are the Marlin trainers as well. Watch the last pitch and see if we pick up anything. Kind of a little waggle of the arm after he made that pitch. A little grimace there, too. He was on his way back up the mound. He moved his arms up. The grimace came there. And that's it for Carter Caps. He's coming out of the game. Caps exits. And the Marlins are going to go to the bullpen. Now they don't necessarily have to bring the guy in that was warming up. They can pick anybody and give them as much time as they want to warm up. Caps and Chuck Hernandez. Talking it over. Looks like Mike Dunn is going to come out. He's loose, so this shouldn't take a long time. We'll step aside. Kendall Toyota called to the bullpen.
first and second. Carter Caps has left the ball game with some sort of ailment or injury. Not sure yet. But it's Mike Dunn. Trying to protect a 2 0 lead. Six innings worth of Jose Fernandez. Brian Morris pitched the seventh and pitched quite well. Justin Upton is the hitter. The count is 0 2. There's Ichiro, Christian Yelich, and Derek Dietrich talk it over. Single by Salarte and a walk to Kemp, responsible for the runners out there. MLB.tv, you gotta have it. If you want a pitch tracking widget to follow you everywhere you go, alive or awake, sleep, whatever, 24 hours a day, live streaming Major League Baseball games in high definition. 400 devices. Tommy Hutton has. I think seven of the 400 devices you can watch MLB.tv Premium on, and it includes a free at bat 15 subscription. Mike Dunn, nice percentage by Dunn, 21 to 25 inherited runners stranded. And he inherits two, but he also inherits an 0 2 count. And he gets him. Nice job by Mathis to get down and get that slider. And so Upton strikes out. So I believe in his four bats, he saw 12 pitches, 12 strikes, and he struck out four times. Yonder Alonzo now. Yeah, that's a. Uh, How does Sabermetric spit that out? Uh, <laughs> Four strikeouts on 12 pitches. Well, that obviously ties a major league record, right? Yeah, without question. I wonder what the all time record is. What, what if someone's gone five strikeouts, 15 pitches? Well, I don't know. Alonzo single back in the fourth has walked. Ah! Oh and two. Trying to slow down the San Diego Express. Padres have won seven of eight, 12 of 16, getting themselves on the edge of that wild card chase. Stays at one and two. Afternoon games getting tighter, some contentious games. Benches have cleared in Cincinnati with the Pirates and the Reds. Benches have cleared in Toronto with the Royals and the Blue Jays. Trying to catch that outside part, get Alonzo to chase.
Braves have a 6 2 lead over the Phils, top seven. Told you Andrelton Simmons has a thumb injury. They know it's not fractured. He will have an MRI tomorrow. Himself. That was a strike. Plenty of the plate. And he knew it. Yesterday, Major League debut, and a nice one for Chris Reed, left-handed pitcher, Stanford University. Two scoreless innings. It's a nice way to start. Twelve pitches in those two innings. A lot of ground balls, a lot of work right back at him. And for Reed, our course like cold hard facts. Born in London, first British born player in Marlins history. Phil Stockman was the last in Major League Baseball back in 2008. It's a very nice note. Kevin Quackenbush stays in, Miguel Rojas stands in. Bush had a low pitch inning to go through the seventh. One, two, three. Go back out here in the bottom of the eighth. Christian Yelich, Derek Dietrich also scheduled to appear. Bottom eight, two nothing. Miami on top. Up the middle, Rojas got another hit. He has a six game hit streak. He is two for four. That means he is eight for his last 12 over those six games. With him swinging the bat the way he has, it, it allows Dan Jennings to also spell Danny Echeverria if he chooses. He could give Martin Prado a day off at third base. Obviously, Gordon getting the day off at second. Quackenbush. A long beard. It gives way to a, a much tighter look. Kendall Toyota called to the bullpen.
looking to keep it right at 2 nothing. Mark Zipchinski is in, and the lefty specialist gets Christian Yelich. You got Derek Dietrich, and then Martin Prado. Andre's bullpen continues to work. Right hander getting ready. You look at that name, what? Zepchinski. I believe his nickname is I Chart. I Chart or Scrabble. Either one. How much, <laughs> how much would his name earn in Scrabble? Yeah, but you can't use names. What? Can you? If you could, if you use could. Names. <laughs> oh, it'd be a thousand points. <laughs> yeah, there are some. I mean, there's some issues, really. When you and I'm not a Scrabble guy. Words with friends occasionally. But there's only one Z in Scrabble. You're you're on words with friends constantly. Just on the plane, Tom. Okay. Just on the plane. When the Wi-Fi doesn't work. I'm on words with friends. Craig, you're a Scrabble guy. How do we get around this Gee, and, I, and get Zipchinski in there? I'm, you just said it, so I started adding him up. I'm, is R one or if R is one, I think it's forty. Because Z is ten, right? Right. P and C are three. You got the Z ten. The Y is a four, and the K is a five. So I think the add. I, I could be wrong, but I'm going to guess forty. So you get two Z's, right? You get two Z's is twenty. Okay. And you got 23, 26 with the P and C. Now, if you wanted another good word, you could go with uh, Young Ervis Salarte. Yeah, I'm countering with uh, Adrian yeah. de Spagne. Could be a double word score, and then you'd be 80. I think the Padres would win it at Scrabble. <laughs> yes. Craig, did your dog make it out uh, this He did time? not. He did not. But he, he, I think we have a photo maybe in the post game show. He, he is uh, tearing apart Bob the Shark back home. A little giveaway? Yes. As a memory of Marlins Park. Runner goes. Great hey, job. Hey. Pitch is taken and the throw not in time. Whoa! And Rojas is out. He crashed and popped over the bag. Tried to reach back and keep his foot on. That's a little too much pop up in a pop up slide. Well, he got a great jump. Here comes the slide. He doesn't really he catch the. If you're going to pop up, you try to hit the bag with your front foot. He caught it with the back foot and came off. And he knew it, too. There was no argument from Rojas. Good effort by Amarista to stay with the tag. We have double check. Craig is on it. It's 40 for Zepchinski in Scrabble. See any game, any game show. What? A strike to Dietrich. One of the other anomalies, aside from Zepchinski's name, is the. Uh, the strikeouts to Justin Upton. Four strikeouts on 12 pitches. It's happened once this year in the big leagues. Wow. Brett Laurie against Texas. Laurie for Oakland. That was early. Prior to Upton and Laurie. The last time it happened, this is a great name. This is a Scrabble name. Prior to Upton today and Laurie in early April, the last time four strikeouts on 12 pitches occurred in the big leagues, 1988. Mike Pagliarulo. Pags, UM guy. 1988 for the Yankees Yankee against third Milwaukee. Baseman. John Chimchuk is having a, a, a and, terrific and day, our baseball historian. You know what, Rich? I, I would have seen that. I would have broadcast that game. There you go. You were the one of the Yankee, Yankee radio guys. Radio in 1988. And as I remember, you were the first guy to utter the Yankees win. <laughs> yeah. No, that was you, right? No, that was not me. No. <laughs> you 
You and the great Hank Greenwald on Yankees radio. That was strike three. Dietrich on his way to first has to turn back and ask Adrian Johnson, Are you sure? And wow, that's not even a strike and not close. Pitch number six. All right, here comes AJ Ramos. Just try to nail it down. For more information, to find a participating dealer, go to FloridaCubotaDealers.com. 2 nothing, Miami on top. Six of those shutout innings. A Jose Fernandez start. Ten strikeouts for Jose. 112 pitches. That's why he lasted just the six. Cole Gillespie into the game in center. A little defensive swap. Pushes Christian Yelich to left. Derek Dietrich, who was just rung up on that to pitch that was out, is out of the game. Now Ramos and his last few appearances have not been smooth. Go back to Friday night. His first inning was quick, tidy. Marlins tried to coax another inning out of him. Their bullpen was down a man. And that's when the trouble started. A single, three walks. He ended up giving up four runs. Came out after five hitters. Derek Norris, Jed Jerko, and then Alexei Amarista is scheduled. Center, it's going to be in there for a hit. Norris, a broken bat, base hit, and the Padres have some life. Jose watching. If the Marlins and Ramos can shut it down, Jose would go to 16 and 0 in his career at home. Good fastball off the end of the bat, and you you know you just come in for defense. This isn't an easy play for anybody. It's going to drop in front of just about every center fielder. Now Jerko who has the power with one swing to tie the game. Though he has just five homers this year. What? Jerko hit 23 in 2013. That was his coming out party. On the edge, hadn't he? The second one, barely a strike.
one and two. It seems like it's never easy. Two balls, two strikes. Norris is single. Miami trying to snap a four game skid. Jose Fernandez in line for win number five in start number six. And after starting 0 and 2, the count now three balls and two strikes. Amarista who does take the at bat. He's one for three. But is one for his last 27. That one was in the fifth. He tripled the right. Brett Wallace is on deck for the Padres. Live presented by Checkers. It's coming up right after the finish of this one. The word out of Miami's clubhouse Carter Capps right elbow stiffness. to put it in play and bring Wallace up with two on. Amarista to right. It's deep and it's gone. And the Padres have tied it. Alexi Amarista just his third of the season. I believe, Rich, it was Alexi Amarista who hit a huge home run against the Marlins last year as well. In this ballpark. Wow. Boy, a guy that had been one for his last 27. Boy, that's a crying, crying shame. Broken 0 for 25 with a triple back in the fifth inning and ties it here with a home run. As I mentioned last inning, the Padres right now are on a really magical ride. The extra inning win on Friday, that incredible comeback and win Thursday in New York. The problem is when and AJ knows it as well as anybody if you pitch from behind and you fall behind it doesn't matter the hitter he knows you have to come with a fastball. Remember it was the Marlins that hit a ninth inning home run. Derek Dietrich on Friday that sent that game to extras before the Padres would win it.
Now the Padres bullpen is up and active. Joaquin Benoit, Brandon Maurer. Wallace hits it hard on the ground. Rojas gets the outs. Two outs. Well, no win for Jose. Despite six shutout innings, ten strikeouts. Lexi Amarista spoils that. He's short. The shot of him. One nice thing about Amarista is short enough you could just shoot right through the uh, dugout fence and get a perfect shot of it. Uh, full of energy, and you're right, Hut. A history of hurting the fish. He's got a triple and a homer in this ball game. Venable. Boy, and it's a, you start thinking ahead, and you certainly hope it is not serious with Carter Caps, but with. Elbow stiffness, you know, he's not going to be available for a, a little while. Do so you start thinking about the back end of the bullpen now? Well, caps with the stiffness in the elbow. Ramos with the struggles on the mound. Tagged for the four runs and the extra inning loss. The other night, here blowing a save, giving up a two run homer to Alexei Amarista of all people. Last year, Rich, it was early in the season. April 6th. Against Nathan Evaldi. Evaldi was on a roll. Amarista stunned everybody. Amarista. In that case, last year it was a pinch hit, three run homer. Off the ball. Venable strikes out, the damage done. The Padres have tied it to the bottom of the ninth in Miami. It's 2 2. Baldy cruising last year. Breaking ball in. Pinch hit three run homer. 
And that was in the seventh inning, top of the seventh inning. That made it a three to one game. The Marlins got to run the bottom half. San Diego added one more, and the Padres won that game four to two. And it was also on a Sunday, I believe. Brandon Maurer is the pitcher. Martin Prado is the hitter. It's Prado, Bohr, and Mathis. And everybody, I think, here still stunned at the turn of events. A breakdown by the Marlins bullpen, both physical and fastball line foul. And in the box score, the home run obviously by Amarista. But Carter Caps taken out of the game with right elbow stiffness. One two coming. It's actually Cole Gillespie who's on deck. My bad on the double switch. McKee stayed in at first. Gillespie came in in center. Count full to Prado. Jose's credit he's been on the rail and he hasn't wavered he was the guy in the dugout during the commercial that was the loudest and the most encouraging you know on the rail he'd be the first off that rail if the Marlins win it right here too. lead off walk Prado's aboard. Jenny has T. Gordon available, JT Real Muto as you look ahead at this inning. But remember the pitcher is in deep trick spot in the lineup, the number four spot. Gillespie's going to take a walk down to talk to Lenny Harris here. From the looks of D. Gordon sitting on the step, I don't think the Marlins, unless something happens here, are having any plans of using him. He's normally a guy, if he's going to pitch run, would be stretched out. Maybe he's done it already. Oh, and two. Gillespie's bunt fielded on a hop. What a throw by Alonzo. Safe at first. Yonder Alonzo with an athletic play at first. He couldn't get it in the air. The next best thing was this. What a great play by Yonder Alonzo. He gives you the pop up slide, fields, and throws to get the force out at second base. He's made a couple of really nice plays. This afternoon, remember the play at the plate getting yellow. Wow. Pops will be proud of those plays. Yes. So now it's Mathis with Gillespie at first. Mathis shoots one foul. Alexi Amarista ambushing AJ Ramos with a two run homer to tie it at two. And Mathis fouls it back. 
Brandon Maurer in for the Padres. This was a James Shields, Jose Fernandez start. Miami got two against Shields in the first inning, and that was it. So Amarista ties it in the ninth. Fernandez struck out 10, walked two, four hits. Shields gave up those two runs, five hits, six innings. Mathis takes away. Padres have had quite a week continuing their strong play over the last two weeks. Winners of seven of eight, four in a row. That wild win in New York. Runner goes, Gillespie on the way to second, and he's going to get there with a stolen base. On ball three to Mathis. Good jump, but Cole Gillespie has easy speed. Doesn't look like he's running hard, but got a good jump. And just eluded that tag. Danny Echeverria is on deck. Mathis looking at a full count here. Outfield not very deep. Stays full at three and two. Justin Upton, Will Venable, and Matt Kemp. From left all the way to right, the Padre outfield right now. Math is getting around on that one. Full count. So there will be no 16 and 0 for Jose Fernandez at home. This is start number 24 in his career. He was all set to go to 16 and 0. The Marlins in his 23 starts in this building are 20 and 3. Mathis takes in. Was a strike. Adrian Johnson, home plate umpire, missed it. Pitch number nine. It's been a rough afternoon for Adrian Johnson behind the plate. Very inconsistent today. That's now in vogue for walk off celebration. Miami hasn't had many of those lately. I mean, that's a premeditated on Jose's part. AJ Ramos, who blew the save, watches from the dugout. the state of the Padres bullpen. Miami saw Craig Kimbrell last night. Friday night and Kimbrell saved the wild win against the Mets on Thursday. Three run 
Good shot. Jose knew what he was doing with the bottle of water ready. If ever there was a team in need of a feel good win, it was the Marlins today. Jose Fernandez didn't get the win, but he certainly pitched very, very well. And the Marlins who blew the save in the ninth win it in the bottom half. A Danny Echevarria, his fifth of the season. And it snaps a four game losing streak for the Fish, a four game win streak for the Padres. And would A.J. Ramos love to give the win to Jose Fernandez? Fifth home run for Echevarria this year. He had already established a career high with four. A no doubter to a deep, deep part of this ballpark at the base of the home run sculpture. Echebria signs a few autographs. Getting ready for a post game interview. 5 2 Miami beats the Padres and salvages a win in this three game weekend series. Been a nice year for Echeverria and a good moment here, certainly. You'd love to see Rich uh, attention drawn toward Echeverria because of the great defense he's played this year. Certainly worthy of winning a gold glove. Go down to Craig Minervini. Craig? Well, we have a special guest interpreter here, Mr. Jose Fernandez, but we want to talk to him too. But first, we got to talk to Adani. Adani, what a, you hit the ball hard, and what a home run for you. What about that moment for you guys? Woo! <laughs> Pero en verdad que me siento demasiado, demasiado feliz y le agradezco a Dios porque le pedí mucho decidir este juego. You know, it feels, it feels really good. It feels, it feels blessed by God. And uh, the first time that he's a walk-off home run, so he's really, really excited and I'm uh, really happy about the team win tonight. How about getting dunked on? No, sí, él siempre hace eso. Eso es una cosa como de motivación. No, me gusta, me gusta eso. He always does that. I think it's part of the team and he really likes that stuff. Jose, you were awesome. AJ comes out. You were the first one to greet him when he came off after the disappointing uh, situation where he gave up the tying home run. It happens sometimes, but your thoughts on how that went down? Uh, AJ is great. AJ is amazing. Uh, he battles out there, and uh, obviously it's not going to happen to a lot of people watching in the stands because they don't pitch, but it happens to us to pitch, and uh, he's trying his best, man. I got his back, sure. and he has he had my back plenty of times, so... I just told him, hey, you know what, next time. It was meant to, for us to walk it off, so that's how it was even better. <laughs> what did you tell him after the game? We had a shot of you chatting with him. You know, I told him, hey, it was meant for us to walk it off like that, so that's great. You know, I'm telling him, you know, it's meant for us to walk it off, and uh, you're right. I got your back, and I know you got mine, so, it's, you know, it's just part of being a team, and, uh, you know, I really like the way this team is playing right now. No doubt, and, and for you guys to try and now after the trade deadline, for you too, Danny. You know, it was a tough thing. Everybody lost some friends and good players, and I know it hit you guys in the heart. Uh, how a win like this can help? Uh, talk about that first, the game. Ese que fue difícil con los cambios que tuvimos, sabes, de lo que ha pasado, los amigos que se nos fueron y que tan importante este juego ganarlo así de esta forma que lo ganamos. No bueno, principalmente todo el mundo sabe que que este negocio es así. Hay cambios para todos los lugares, pero bueno, como todos esos cambios en verdad son cosas que suceden. Y esta victoria de verdad que nos pone muy, muy orgulloso de, de que la mente de nosotros está positiva para adelante y en verdad que algo muy excitado, de verdad que sí. You know, those are things that happen in the game that, you know, it's a business and, you know, sadly it don't happen, but I think this, this win helps our team a lot and uh, he feels really excited about it. And, you know, I think we, hopefully we're just going to keep playing good, good games. Jose, let's talk about your start here. You know, the last two games people are going to say, Maybe you weren't as sharp as you wanted to be. Well, guess what? You've given up one run in 12 innings, eight hits, 15 strikeouts. So, you know, how do you put this into perspective? You're pitching. The, the bottom line is you're getting the results. 
I'm giving my team a chance to win every day, and yeah. that's what I do. Uh, you know, they trust me on that. Uh, you know, I try my best every time that I go out there. And, uh, if I have it, good. If I don't have it, still got to try my best to give my team a chance to win. And, you know, that's what we did today. We stayed in the game. And yeah. that. We got an amazing walk off. And uh, it's a great team win. And I'm really excited about the way that we play. Jose, the first inning, let's talk about that. They, how did you feel in the first inning? Got a couple hits on you. All of a sudden, you're in a jam. But you get out of it with no damage but 24 pitches. You know, Matt is great. Always behind the play, calling the right pitches. And uh, I think I was just trusting him, uh, you know. Trying to throw a good pitch and trying to get people out, so that's what we do. What was the thought? Were you worried that you weren't going to get a chance to bat in the bottom of the fifth? No, uh, I, wanted, I really wanted to go back out there. I really was there any that, conversation that, about that? I say no chance. I'm going back out. I don't even let him speak, but I think that, you know, I always do that, but I'm lucky. I'm lucky to give my team a chance to win every five days. So then you came up, and then at the top of the six, you go out. Was there? Did they tell you at all, hey, if you get into trouble, we're bringing a lefty, or no? Were they just... No, not at all. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, I was finishing that inning. Uh, I don't know when they were going to take me out. Thanks how they did it. And, uh, yeah. You know, that, that was fun, though. That fifth inning was a big one, especially with Amarista. Boy, has he been a tough hitter. What are your thoughts on Amarista, Edith? ¿Qué tú crees? ¿Qué tú crees, Amarista? Es yo te digo. No, sí, un buen, un buen sobre todo. Pienso que el muchacho juega bien. Pero aparte de ser chiquito, en verdad tiene mucha fuerza porque el jorrón que dio hoy, en verdad yo... No me lo esperaba, podía esperar un hit o un doble, pero en verdad que ese honrón no me lo esperaba, pero son cosas que pasan en el juego. And that's great. We know he's a little guy, he has a lot of power to hit the ball out on this park. Uh, he wasn't expecting him to hit a home run, but, you know, he did. So, you know, a lot of respect for him, and uh, hopefully, you know, he stays, uh, he stays healthy and keeps doing a good job, I guess. Danny, you're at bat when you came up. You hit ripped the ball the time before that. You lined it to center field. What was your thought on, on your approach? At the plate in the, in the ninth inning. Sé que la vez anterior tuviste una línea para hacerte fil que es lo que estaba pensando en la última vez a bate. No, en verdad lo que estaba pensando era un simple hit, darle mal, que me partieran el bate como quiera, pero darle un simple hit. En verdad la ola fue de medio para adentro y las manos reaccionaron. De verdad el jonrón no me lo esperé. He was he was hoping for a broken bat hit and get that run in, but uh, the pitch was inside, so he kind of like got his hands out and uh, he got lucky to hit a home run. It's going. That's uh, 24 straight starts. As you look at that. And you knew it was gone. It yeah, was that's a great crushed, feeling. Huh? That's a great feeling for, for our team. And, uh, you know, he's uh, I think we're going to have a happy Sunday as a family. So I like that. 24 starts, Jose. I know you've been downplaying the stat without a loss at home. Uh, you tied for sixth best all time. Uh, all time. <laughs> it's pretty neat stuff. I know you don't get wrapped up in it during the season. Not really. I just, you know, like I said, I go out there every five days, try to get a win, and uh, give this guy a chance. So that's it. That's all I got. Nice. Thanks a lot for an extended interview. Thank well, you, guys. Good job in per and, uh, interpreting for us, Yeah, too. thank you, guys. <laughs> I think he said gracias. All right, let's go back to you guys. 5-2 Miami. From the, uh, the depths of despair, to blowing a two-run lead in the ninth. The Marlins rescued by a Danny Echeverria. And a walk-off three-run homer, his first walk-off homer. Marlins Live coming up. All the highlights. We'll hear from Jeff Conine as well on this Sunday for Miami beat San Diego 5-2.